I would like to welcome my thank guest you so today, much, so thank you. Singer, one of the best vocalists we have in Uganda. Yeah, I'm honored, really. Yes, really honored. Really, Nava Gray. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good, Crystal. How uh -huh. are you? I'm very well, thank you. You're looking lovely. Thank you. Black and white kind of day, it seems. Yeah. Uh huh. So you mentioned that you were like when we spoke yesterday that you had rehearsals. Yes. Do you rehearse all the time, or do you rehearse for an event when you have one? Lately, when I have an event. Mm -hmm. A few times when I just feel like going and doing some draining, vocal draining, because we need we need that mm -hmm. as artists. Yes. Yeah. So okay, so this is a regular thing. Do you have like a regular band or somewhere you go? Yeah, I have a, a a couple of friends that I call up. Like every time I have a I have a gig or something, and they come and, and they come like support and do like help me. Mm -hmm. uh, like a specific band. They are friends of mine that I've grown with. That I, I used to me. Usually, uh -huh. I'm I'm so comfortable working with people that I've worked with before, not it's new, you know. Mm -hmm. People that know your chemistry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so maybe you can take us back and tell us: Is Gray Nava number one your real name? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, Nava is my real name, mm -hmm. but Gray is something that I came up, I came up with. Why? Like I remember, there's a time when I was uh, trying to find a, a Facebook name. That was like 2008. Something like that. Ah. 2007. Ooh, that's 10 years ago. And then there was a Nava already existing. So it's like, by then I love Grey's Anatomy. So I was like, <laughs> Are you still Grey. watching it? No, 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 no. I you fell off? It. Yes, but oh. I used to love it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, I, I loved it as well. I really? stopped watching though, to be honest. It's still good. It's still good. Though a couple of characters that I knew then are out. We have new people in and, and then catching up now is crazy. Okay. But I used to get so glued to it because I used to have access to the to the episodes here and here and again. Would you cry because I used to cry all the time? Yeah, like but now like I've switched to Bollywood. To Bollywood? Yes. Why? Those guys have gotten me. Like I can't watch a Western movie these days. Are you serious? Yes. What is it about Bollywood? If, it, if, it, if they can get your emotions, all your emotions in just one movie. Like ever since I watched The Three Idiots. Mm -hmm. And if you've watched it, I haven't watched the previous. You should, you should watch it. Look for it. Yes, you should look for it. Then you would love Bollywood movies. Do you never like Bollywood movies? Yes, I never used to love Bollywood movies a long time ago because of the music. I mean, those interludes every time. It was like, ah, major put off. But now, I mean, these guys are taking the industry. Yeah. Even the production, the quality. Yes, the quality yes. and the stories. These directors are awesome. Mm -hmm. It's crazy like that. Well, that's interesting. So, yes, where were you born? I was born in Kampala. Uh, what do you call it? Mango Hospital. Mango Hospital. Okay. Uh huh. And mom, your dad. My mom. My mom is a princess in Dagide. She's mm -hmm. from the royal family. Mm -hmm. My dad is deceased, but he was also a prince. Yeah. I'm supposed to be called a Mombeja, but I I chose Nava because it's short and it helps artistically. Uh, mm -hmm. Mombeja would give people a lot of <laughs> yeah. a rough time. Maybe. Yes. But, so you're a princess. Uh, yes. I always ask princesses. What is it like being royalty? <laughs> Are there different expectations? I for think you? it's 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 all in the spirit. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be about uh, all the glamour, the, you know, the luxury. No, 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 a princess, a real princess, should be a fighter. Mm. Okay. Should be one that faces those, you know, challenges and is not afraid. So the yeah. strength is from within. I don't know what people regard princesses here to be, but when I read the stories. A princess, a, a real princess is supposed to be like a very strong, one with a strong personality. Okay, so you would describe yourself as strong? Yeah. Yeah? Lately. Lately? <laughs> okay, we're going to get Thank to that. God, yes. Where did you go to school? Okay, I went to Bagara Primary School and then afterwards I went to uh, Nairobi, Rayburn mm -hmm. High School and then from there, because my mom used to move a lot, so I used to move along with her, she used to be an, an she was a nurse. Okay. So I used to move along with her every time she was she was going to Kenya. Then I had to relocate there. The schools have. To, uh, then I then from Nairobi we came back. Mm -hmm. Came back from my university. So that's when the whole music affair started. So you were away through most of your school. 
Pardon? Is that you were away when you were in high school? Like secondary school? Uh, like from Boganda Road, mm -hmm. I went to Brayburn. Because okay. that's the, during that time, like after P7, I had to go to with my so mom. So you were there the whole time Arabia. until university? Yes. Ah, okay. Then I came back. All right. Okay, then you came back to the university. Yes. yes. Where did you go? Oh, Macari. But then I didn't like go further because of music. But then afterwards, after some... So is it after 2010, 2011, 2012? I started. I, I redid university because music kind of kind of pushed me away for a while, and then it must have been a bit of a challenge when you yeah, decided it was to leave school for yes, university. Yes, because remember I also had a music. child then. Ah. Mm -hmm. Then I, at one point I felt bored with my routine. Like how old were you when you had your child? Uh, because by then she was. Uh, I went for task of project fame, and I was like. I had a child when I was, is it 18? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How was your family when you had, I mean, did you have support from your family? Because that's a challenge for every family. Yeah, it was a challenge because I was so close to my father. By the time I lost my father, I was like, we, we were two girls, my sister and I, mm -hmm. and three boys. The boys were closer to, to my mom <laughs> for some reason, but I was so close to my dad. So when I lost my dad during that time, that's the time my sister and I decided to leave home and go and Lived, live, live together because we look for a home near my father. My father had two wives, mm -hmm. you know, Muslim families, mm -hmm. so we, we needed to be closer to him. But of course, my stepmother didn't, didn't like that, so we had to get a house nearby so at least we could see him once in a while. So when my dad died in 2005, it was already a crazy moment for me. Mm -hmm. uh, growing up, I thought maybe if I found somebody, maybe somebody. Of a father figure, you know, when you know when you're growing up, you don't know what exactly you want. Just so, the, the, the. so I met a man, and this is a guy that I had my first child with. But then, on on living with this person, I realized that you can't see any, anybody, everybody as a father figure. You know, you just if it's a husband, it has to be a husband, not a. You know, you can't because I failed that void. So I unconsciously That's I looked for those qualities. For. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it, it caused uh, a major uproar, you know, it, it kind of disorganized me a bit because I was not ready for this. I thought I was ready. No, said but it also that helped really, me, yeah. yes, it was really young. Mm -hmm. So, but it helped me though. Mm -hmm. it, it helped me become a stronger person because uh, before the start of my career, he split up with me. So my child by then was three years. Okay. I was 21 then. So 2010, my career was nowhere. I'd already started with Michael, Michael Mugisha, you know Michael Mugisha at Fenon Records? Yes. Courtesy of Steve Jean, I, I started out. So by then I was living alone. I'd already like separated from him. I was living alone and uh, I was working with Steve Jean. So by 2011, Ali Bawani was out. That was the very first song that I did. Yeah. It must have been a challenge. It was a challenge. It was a very big, big challenge. But now I don't regret it. I'm so grateful of course that I had to go through this you know, major crazy things because they made me a better person. Mm -hmm. I can now decide on what exactly I want. I know what to do. I can stand on my two feet and face the crowd. Before, like, facing, uh, I mean, standing on stage was a crazy thing for me. I, I could not get used to it. How did you, know? you manage? What did you do I to think handle those nerves? I think you just have to psych yourself at one point and you just have to believe in yourself. But it takes a while. You just have to have, like, uh, shows every day. To get used to it, face it. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to ask you for your first request because we want to know the music you listen to, so we get to know you better. Yeah. Uh -huh. What's your so first my song? first request is is a international song. It's, uh, it's by Chrisette Michelle. You know, I have her entire album at home, courtesy of my sister. So we listen to her once in a while. She's uh, she started music. I love her voice. I love the way those. Uh, how she does and has her voice is not the usual that we listen to. Mm -hmm. So she inspires me a lot. She does. Yeah. Okay. So is this song in particular a special one of the album or you just like the album? Mm, I just love this song because it's it's not on the album. I don't have this current song. I only have the old songs, the her very first album, but I think this is on the second album or something of that sort. It's called A Couple of Forevers. You mentioned the fact that you had a child when you were 
really young. Yes. And you left school to pursue your music. Yeah. How is that? Because that was a very big step, especially of course, yes. trying studying music. Yeah. Because it was all crazy, you know. Like I was going through uh, a moment. I mean, 2005, I lost my father, and I was so close, to, close to him. And it was a crazy moment trying to like uh, work with a family, and then the loss of my father. It was all conflicting. Because at one point, I was like looking for myself. And then when 2008 came, I was like, I felt like I needed to do something about my life. Like I, did, I, I wasn't so, there was, a, there was something calling, but I could not like trace it. You know, there's always something that is calling you. Yes. At one point I, 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 I visioned myself on stage singing, but I don't know how the whole thing will happen. Mm -hmm. I was all dreaming, you know, <laughs> I was, I'm so much of a dreamer. <laughs> so when 2000 came, 2008 came, I was like, I felt this is my year. I need to do something. I didn't know about Tasca Project fame. I didn't know that it was going to happen. I didn't know anything about it, but I felt I needed to do something about my life because I, I was feeling really out of place, family. Now I'm trying to discover myself. Who am I really? Am I, am I, am I going to be a housewife or, you know? Mm -hmm. So 2008, surprisingly, I heard of Tasca Project fame and my family gave me a go ahead, go and give it a shot, see where you fit. Mm -hmm. Is it music or you should pursue your, your education? What do you think? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I went for it. I auditioned and it was all like a joke because <laughs> oh. I was laughing all through the auditions. Are you serious? Yeah. And it, it happened, I got a call on, it was a Wednesday, that you have made it, uh, congratulations, now you're going to the house. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. So there I went. I thought it was a joke. <laughs> and then? <I> got, <laughs> the time when you have to like present a song and you're going to stage. I've I'm I'm never been on stage before. You know, all the while it was singing, with, singing behind closed doors with my family. You had never been on stage? No, never. Before Tasca Project? Never. Right? At all. Okay. Uh -huh. So everything was a shocker. Everything was like, new. I'm in this place, but like everything was a shocker. I've never been away from my family for even a week. Now imagine you're going to be away from your family for like three months mm -hmm. with different people. Try to like learn everybody, leave, learn to live, live together. Oh, it's crazy because there were so many <laughs> incidences where I felt I should just sit alone and do things on my own, but it was difficult because every time you have to meet the academy, the, 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 the principals, the the principal, the, the teachers, the coaches, it was all crazy. So I had to learn to live with everyone. Mm -hmm. Was it a defining time in it your was, life for it was, you? It was, it was challenging, it was shocking, but it was good for me because right now I can, I can realize it was really, 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 it, ha it has really helped, uh, help me identify who I really am. Mm -hmm. And build your confidence as yes, well. Yes, yes. So Tasca Project fame, we got to see you on TV, we're all like, who is this woman? And exactly. oh my god, she can sing! And, and she's sexy too! <laughs> it was crazy. Uh -huh. Imagine everything that was going through me at that moment. My spirit was all in mm -hmm. turmoil, trying to place myself. Okay. Yeah, but I thank God. Thank God yeah. for that opportunity. Exactly. And then first the project then ended. Yeah, it ended you and I was... About reality shows and then what happens after. Yes. Because I was like, in fact, I was so happy. I was relieved I was living. <laughs> because I used to throw tantrums, I used to cry at one point, it was crazy. Yeah. Would you call yourself an emotional person? Yeah, I'm so emotional. Okay. Mm, I was so emotional then, but now I'm a stronger person. Mm -hmm. And it's all because of the challenges that came, kept, kept coming my way. Mm -hmm. The journey, this, this entire journey, the music journey, has been a, a defining moment for me. So after you left Tasca Project Fame, what is your next step? What did you do? After, when I left Tasca Project Fame, I thought I was now going to start my, my diff, doing, I mean like work, fashion industry. I was going to do, because I love my, my the, the fashion, my sister, like, uh, my, sister, my sister and I want, like, it was part of our dream. Ah. Do fashion and then also web designing and the IT degree that I was pursuing in my career. I was like, okay, finally. Now I've realized where I fit in the music industry and I don't think I want to go there because it's a shocking experience. Not knowing that this is the moment that I'm going to really 
do music and do music and do music and nothing else but music. Mm-hmm. In fact, a friend of mine told me, but what do, you, what do you really want to do? And I told him I want to do fashion and I want to do all this. And he told me, no, you're going to do music. Really? Because by then my, my voice was not as good as it is now. Mm-hmm. It was really, 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 really bad. <laughs> really, really bad. bad. I don't think you can say bad, but I mean like... It was not something that I felt that could take me anywhere. It was good enough. Yeah, it wasn't good enough. Okay. Yeah. But then, as uh, when I left thinking I'm going to embark on other things and activities, that's when I, I used to get phone calls from producers, from Steve Jean. I met so many uh, artists by then. I was working with GNL. I got to work with KS Alpha. So many friends of mine. Mm-hmm. So I found myself in the studio more all the time. I was in the studio doing something. And before you know it, I met Michael Mogisha through Steve Jean. And this guy came with the Antelide track because Antelide was the very first song I recorded. Yes. And it was like, I had carried a, a couple of music. Remember, I also worked with Mr. Chisema Kula and there was some. At some point? Yes, mm-hmm. in the very beginning, after leaving, leaving Tusker Project Fem, I met Mr. Mm-hmm. And with them, I also learned how to articulate the Luganda because we grew up listening more to. <laughs> what do they call it? We grew up listening more to the Western kind of music, and, that, and when at home we argued in English, so it was all crazy. Uh, <laughs> now here I, I am with Misa, she's trying to figure out Luganda, and, and I was like, will I really manage this? So it was like training, mm-hmm. because at one point I also lived with my grandmother. Like Luganda, it came, God kind of programmed this to be mm-hmm. something everybody in, is enjoying now, but he had to like coach me through it bringing several people, you know, a Misachi here, English somewhere, <laughs> as your, as the language you're, bo- you're born to- speaking or the schools that you went to that really refine you. So it was all crazy. You talked about going back to school. Mm. You made the decision to go back to school. Yes. What yes. is that? Now, that was during the, doing music here with Steve Jane while I'm also pursuing the, mm-hmm. yeah. It was 2000, 2010 because that so you went then back I to Macquarie University. Yes, yes. Uh-huh. And what did you do when you went back? I, t- I, I did that. I degree IT, IT degree. IT. Have you ever worked in that field? No. <laughs> but of course, I do it on on on, on, uh, on the side with my sister because she also uh, does web designing and everything. So, you do a so bit kind of, of design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Then the fashion also comes in. Well, okay. So your sister does fashion. She oh, she loves fashion and she's always designed ever since she was a child. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. So does she design your outfits? Some she's yet to do that because that's what we're bugging on right now as we speak. Yeah. Okay. So what is your next request? My next request is by an African, a Nigerian. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's an it's a it's a it's a song by Tiwa Savage called All Over. I just listened to it. Uh, I was in a ta- as a I was in a cab recently and I listened to it and I was like, who's this? And this was Tiwa and I was like, oh, she's back. She's back. You know, she, she has a way she, she kind of surprises us sometimes. You think she's going to go with a certain, uh, uh, certain genre and then she comes bang and she gives you this. So I loved all over, though I didn't like the video. Mm-hmm. I, I had a different... <laughs> uh, I had, imp- yeah. Expectation? Yeah, I didn't like the... Be? I didn't like her in that uh, kind of, uh, what do you call it? She was in a revealing bikini and all. I, I didn't think. She has I thought moments. she was going to maybe appear in a suit or something and just be all. Anyway, that's what I feel. Artists' minds are crazy. I know. And artists are different. The yeah. interpretations of songs and the yeah, videos. Yeah. Sometimes, like you said, sometimes you watch a music video and you're like, but, but that's not at all what yeah, the song exactly. made me feel. Mm, but maybe, I mean, it all matters to the artists themselves what they feel. Like maybe that's what she felt like. So. Okay. You respect her for that. Yeah, but she's so talented. Yeah. She was oh, savage. She, because she writes her own music as well, that's mm-hmm. why I respect her so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All over. All over. All over. All over. I make you make you spend this money. All over. All over. I have Grey Nava here with me on Celeb Select. And uh, you were talking about Tiwa Savage and how you, know, you look up to her. Yeah. Are there other musicians that you inspire you? That you yeah, there is also Asha, because uh, I remember watching her video. Which, which song is that? The very first song? Jayla. Mm-hmm. And she was giving directions on how she wanted her piano to be played. Simple chords. Da, 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 da. I was like, oh, 
Okay, we have we, st- we have like ladies that can actually be bosses when it comes to what they want in the music industry. Yeah, I think most people when they think about women who uh, seem to know every like mm. different thing, mm. you have like Beyonce on that yes. list. Those have you seen Alicia Keys as well? Oh, she oh, she's also good. She's very particular. She knows what she wants. Mm-hmm. It's it's good as an artist to have that quality because it has helped me a lot with my songs. I go to the studio and they expect that Nav has to argue about this. She doesn't want this to happen. So I'm always on the, with the producer and they are so used to me now. She's <laughs> a good they thing. But expect me to argue. Yes. But yeah, I don't like this track. Fine. I don't like the way it goes. I don't want that. But with Michael Mugisha, it was different. The very first producer I worked with that really is, I don't know, knows what I really want. It's Michael Mugisha, the one that did Michael, uh, the one that did uh, Ntere Day, Ali Bawani, and those one, there's another song that he... Speaking of Ntere Day, you were just telling me that... Yes, I was telling you that... That, that song somehow escaped the studio. Yeah, it all began when I'd taken some songs to, 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 to Steve Jin, and then he introduced me to Michael Mugisha as, as the guy that's going to be producing all the artist's songs in his studio. By then, Michael Mugisha was working with Steve Jin. And uh, this this guy listened to all the songs that I'd done. Remember, there were Misachi songs there that I'd done, the local thing. And it was like, the fact that it was coming from the UK, he was like, no. <laughs> They're nice songs, but they won't work for you. And he was right. Now I see it. So he's like, I have a couple of tracks that I came with. You could listen to them, the fact that you, you can write, and see what you can do. So he first played that song, Ntede the track, the track, the beat. Yeah. And I was like, I love this track. I was like, can you write? And, it, and, and, I, and I told him, yes. And then, there and then, stu- Steve Jean was in studio and he was also in studio by then. The time he played that track and I was like, I came up with a chorus there and then. Okay. We're listening to it. And Steve Jean was like, it won't work. And I felt like, oh, my hopes have been, you know. The, that, that chorus, the Antelide chorus, I came up with it the, the, the actual time he played the beat. Right there and then. Right there and then. So it's like, Steve Jean was like, it won't work. But Mike was like, no, it will work. It's just that he's had it because it's not yet recorded. So come first thing in the morning, it will be recorded. But I was feeling like down and all. I went home feeling all so down. Then I prayed about it. You know, I'm a Muslim. So I offered two rakas. I prayed. And then I prayed for this song. <laughs> Before you know it, I had like lyrics come through like crazy. God had me instantly. So I went the next day and we put the the, 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 the chorus in. My God, Steve could not leave the would not leave the studio he's just like, by what? hearing. Yeah, he just had the chorus and he's like, "Wow, this is a, this is a hit. Mm-hmm. You've killed this one." But we haven't we hadn't yet yet placed the the what they call it the verses. So we played the, we, we placed the verses that that same day. The song was done. Mm-hmm. Then I did a, a couple of songs still. I feel like I had uh, this kind of inspiration for writing, something that I didn't have, you know? Mm-hmm. It started to come so easily. Then we did, uh, there's a song we did called Nkwewa Day, then another one called Alibawani. Mm-hmm. So they suggested Alibawani comes out first. Be your first release. Yeah, but I also fe- I felt like intended they should come out first, but. You know, we were not <laughs> <laughs> on the same page. <laughs> yeah. So I had to respect them. Mm. Aliwani came out, they did a video, it was released 2011. Mm. Now, something happened. Ntere Day caused a kind of a, a rift between me and Steve Jin. Oh, okay. Yeah. That he thought I was the one that took the song to the studio when it was not, when it was like half, 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 halfway done. It was. It, yeah. I hadn't finished it. No, it. I like. I finished mastered all the vocals. It. it wasn't mastered yet. Mm-hmm. So these guys, these capital guys, tell Steve that I did it, and yet they're the actual people that came to studio and coerced um, Alex Mohanji to give them the song. So Alex Mohanji kept quiet, and even up to now, I'm strangling him. I've never told him that <laughs> because I was told this 2012 when I'd already like separated with Steve Jim because of that. Well, he's going to find out now. No, he knows. I believe he knows. I believe somebody told him. Mm-hmm. But this song was actually released by Alex Mohanji and some Capital FM guys by then who were working there during that time. They took this song and played it because they loved it. Mm-hmm. So it forced uh, Michael Mogisha to actually do this song right. And 
give it to them because it was already ev it was everywhere. And I didn't know about its release. We were playing it. I mean, yeah. And by then it was called Gwenange, <laughs> not Nterede, because it was in that version, a demo. Mm. It was called Gwenange. That's, well, that's I guess one so of that's the risks how, that you take in music. But I, I now believe, learned, right? yeah. But now I believe that because I prayed for this song so much, it's everywhere and people love it. Mm. It, it's it's not on its own. It has a spirit. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, a song that forces itself out of studio when it's not yet mastered. It's moving on its own. It's touching so many people's hearts and souls. It's crazy. Yeah. When you look back, you see the positives. Yeah. yeah. And the positives. Song. I yeah. can't tell you how many times I have played that song. It never dies out. When it hits the lecture. Every time I listen to it, I'm like, wow. Yeah, this was a blessing from above. Yeah. So your journey as a musician, I mean, you're not one of those musicians who's like always out there, you're not in the tabloids all the time. How have you managed that? Uh, trust me, I haven't managed, but I think it's it's caught. Like I'm, 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 I'm that spiritual person, so spiritual. Like every time I'm about to do something, I have to pray about it. Those times when I like got into so many crazy challenges and everything. The challenges have been there. So many of them, but I mean, certain things, God has a way of, you know, protecting his own. So I've been protected from them. I don't know how God does it, but it doesn't work like men. It works in mysterious ways. So I think that's how I've managed. And also the upbringing. Because my mom never let any of us like uh, get out of the house or anything of that sort. We're always in closed doors. If she found you, she would just beat you up. Really? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like crazy. So we were protected as kids. We were protected from watching crazy movies. You know? Though, of course, I mean, you cannot protect a child too much. She will still try to be adventurous and try to find out. Curious. If you don't tell her, yes. So it, it's also taught me a lot with my own child that you always have to be open with your children. Tell them the truth. It helps. It helps. It helps them. Yeah, because... Right, so, uh, we'll get back to that. Because mother, motherhood is just another ball game. Yeah, together. it is. So, okay. But what is your third request? My third request is a song that I wrote for Rema. For Rema. It's mm -hmm. called uh, Chirunji. Mm -hmm. I, I've, okay, I've, I tried writing for many artists, but... They don't actually bring out the song, but she did. You know, she's she's that good. So I love the song. Okay, so here it is. Chirunji. <laughs> We happen to be at phase two today and I am getting to know Grey Nava a whole lot better. It's so good to have you here on Celeb Select. Thank you so much, Christopher, for having me. <laughs> now, you were talking about as a mother, yes. you have learned that you have to be more open yeah. with your daughter yes. and tell her what's out there in the world. Exactly. How has this journey been for you as a mother? What have you learned about yourself? <clears throat> Because, you know, mm -hmm. before, when I was this with the, with the father of my child, I thought that I, I, should, I should just kiss up to him and be a yes person. I was really... Uh, I regret being that person I was before. Because I was so weak. Okay. I could ex easily break down. Um, I was so emotional. And during that time, I lost my father. So I was like clinging on to this person, thinking, if I don't, I'm going to lose my everything. But yeah, my fears came to pass and we had to s split. So this made me a stronger person. I could face like every challenge head on. I was not afraid. It has helped me so much. It has helped me to understand how to groom a child, the child that I have now. And to understand myself more. Because sometimes we're living our lives and we don't know exactly who we We don't know who we who exactly we are you know you're living somebody else's life you're mimicking somebody else's lifestyle you know but it's always good to be yourself in fact that's what that's how the song D came about <laughs> yeah and uh, so had you worked with Brianza before that no 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 I hadn't because I'm so in that I'd like chosen Big Trio to be the rapper in that song oh. but for some reason I think it was God making this happen because it's also a spiritual song. I was looking for a rapper 
who had that spirituality in them. And Ryonga was the. Okay. Yeah, and I love this flow. I love I love Ryonga's flow. If you were to describe yourself as a musician, who are you? I'm so many things, but one. <laughs> like I haven't have a whole book mm -hmm. to explain myself. But I think I'm I'm a spiritual, emotional artist. I love to create. I love to create because I love I love being in studio more than being on stage. Because in studio I'm, I'm able to do things in secret. I don't want certain things to be out there. That's why you you won't find Nava everywhere. It's, it's pretty difficult to find you. Yeah, which, is, which is a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. At least let the music speak for itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The artist doesn't have so much to it. Okay, so what are you working on right now? Working on like having a concert for my fans. I've not like had a, a concert yet. So we're still like on talks with that. The debts and everything. And so many other things because I'm also uh, planning on shooting some videos, D video. There's so many videos that need uh, to be shot and more things to come. Okay. Alright, so you said that in music you've learned that you cannot trust everyone. And it's also written in the Bible that we should, we should not trust in man. We should have confidence in God. Because, I mean, people, the devil will use people against you. It's not the people that we should blame. We should blame the devil. Because if, you're, if he finds that your spirit is weak, it's very easy to, to use you. So that's how the devil works. So you can't trust people because we are weak. You know, today I'm, 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 all, I'm all nice and everything. Tomorrow I'm different. Tomorrow the devil kind of uh, woke me up and told me how to play the game. You know? And before you know it, you're regretting, why did I do that? Da, 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 da. So we are weak. We human beings are weak. We should put our trust in God. Because anyone can put you down. Anyone can go against you. But God can't. Yeah. Are you in a relationship now? No. Oh, that no was very quick. Yes. <laughs> very firm. <laughs> not interested at all. It's not about not being interested, but there's a time for everything. Sometimes we force certain things to happen because everyone else around us is is in a relationship and I'm feeling left out, you know. The people we hang out with can really mislead us unknowingly. Mm, you know? Yeah. Because my friend is in a relationship or she's getting married, I should get married. You know that, it's, that it doesn't pressure. work that way. Mm. You should be ready for everything. God has to make you ready. No, so maybe you haven't met him yet. Hmm? Maybe you haven't met him yet. Yeah, maybe. Also maybe. that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much, Costa, for having me. It's been such a pleasure and thank you. for you to share your story as well. Um, what, what's your advice to, to young women out there? Mm. I mean, the young women who are single mothers who have been going through mothers. what you went through. Yeah, and I, they should not regret. You know, most times we're busy regretting why this happened and why that happened. Being a single mother, is more like um, it's crazy, it's tough because the child needs their father. Mm -hmm. Every child needs to grow up with a father. That's why you find many ladies now that uh, were grown by their mothers or uh, going through wanting to look for a father figure, mm -hmm. you know, somewhere yeah. because they didn't live with it. So I think they should not be regretful. It's maybe God. It's God trying to make you a stronger person. Taking, th taking you through the right <laughs> though you want things there and then you should be patient because you might fall into the hands of somebody worse than the, the, the one that abandoned you so you should not be in a rush to get somebody else maybe, what if that guy maybe molests your little girl or something of that sort I mean it's everywhere lately it's, people are calling it the trend it's, it's not good yeah. so people should be I mean you should be patient and pray People lately are thinking God is some sort of myth, <laughs> some, yes. somebody that we should ignore. He's part of us, not only in church or the mosques, he's here, he's right here, the soul. He's closer to you than your jugular, what they call it, the jugular bone, the vein. The vein. Yeah. Wow. So we should engage him more because he will make things happen at the right time. It's not easy, it's crazy, it's challenging, it's all those things, but we should be strong. You said you, you write a lot of your own music. Yes. Do you use your, your life? Do you 
share like in your music like, like what are you inspired by when you write like for example when i wrote in Ted day it's just the track that gave me direction it's not that i was in a long distance relationship no i wasn't but the track kind of gave me i don't know how it happens i can't explain to you but that's what i feel like singing about mm -hmm. Is there, so, are there any artists that you would like to work with um, here or here or even in africa what yeah people like Ash asha mm -hmm. people like zahara mm -hmm. and uh, oliver matukuzi is also he's coming to town by the way you never know and I'm going to be part of that show so. mm -hmm. okay. yeah yeah <laughs> I've always loved Brandy mm. Mm. so many artists okay. so again thank you for coming on the thank show thank you so much I was asking you what you've learned about life I guess that's your the last thing that's your mantra you know sometimes you feel you're not good enough and those things kind of wear us down they kill the confidence they kill your everything about you but try to love yourself because why I'm saying this is that many girls lately teenage teenagers or maybe those than right now 20s 20 I'm, I'm also like kind of reviewing my myself at 23 21 22 then I was I didn't love myself I thought I knew everything I thought I could live somebody else's life but I kind of made so many mistakes so many mistakes that I could not get myself out of until I, I, I discovered that I could actually love myself and, and, and uh, not be coerced by anybody to be some, something that I'm not. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what's your last request? It's one of your own songs. Yes, it's called Ndi. It's my very latest song. Mm -hmm. It's one song that came as a result of, uh, of that that I'm talking about, of, of loving myself. Mm -hmm. Like he's given me the chance to make it through. That's God giving me a second chance. Now, this is something about my life. He's given me the reason to believe that in life you have to leave. And it doesn't matter what the world thinks. Because that's me. Mm. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, you. Take care. I guess we'll see you soon. You mentioned you're doing your own concert. So, yes. Yeah. I'll be there. To that. <laughs> I'll be taunting you. <laughs> so, in D from Grey Nama. Yes. You're not, and I bow when I stand before God. With each turn, I slide past like doorknobs, carving new paths. Can't look back, it's Ford Mark, I slam to the floor hard. But